The players on Callaway High School's football team are continuing to show up for practice despite the fact that their city is in the middle of one of the worst water crises in modern American history. And you ain't got no water at home, and it's a struggle to get water right now. Make sure y'all get a case of water from back there and take home with you, okay? If you need something washed, leave it in the pile right here. Everybody good? Yes, sir. All right, let's get a break. Go ahead. With only a day left before a game against their biggest rival, the district was scrambling to find a school with running water for the teams to play. What kind of struggles are your players coming to you with? The, the biggest issue that they are having is that I, they come to as coach. I go home and I can't even take a bath. So I try to structure my practice to where we're not on the ground as much. We know that these are hard times and a lot of people have to deal with it in different ways. So as coaches, we want to be there for them to help them. Coach Brown lives outside of Jackson and has resorted to doing the team's laundry so they have clean clothes to wear at practice, games, and school. Little to no water has meant no showers after practice and nothing to drink from the tap. For people that, you know, don't play football and don't understand what it is to play in Mississippi heat. The yeah, heat different. Yeah. Could you play a whole season with the water crisis the way it is? Nah, no way. I bring my own water. You, you don't drink out of the fountains at all? No, nah, because, nah. like, we had history, like, with Jackson. It's like, we're always going to build a water alert. Yeah, like yeah. Point of time. You, you never know, know when you're on board. So you can't really, you can't really trust the water. Yeah. Is it, does it ever make you mad knowing that you're up against football teams that haven't had to go through what you guys are going oh, through? No. It, it, it doesn't make, make, make you work harder. It make you want it more. This isn't the first time the capital city of Mississippi has gone without clean drinking water. In early 2021, after a series of winter storms froze pipes, Jackson went an entire month with its water system shut down. This time, two weeks after a flood cut off the city's main water treatment plant, 160,000 people still aren't able to drink the water coming from their taps without boiling it. Fixing the problem would cost an estimated $1 billion, an amount the city simply doesn't have. The feds and state have offered as much as $130 million, but for that to happen, the city has to create a detailed long-term plan for how they'd spend it, something it's yet to do. That leaves Jackson residents feeling like no one is willing to take responsibility for the problem. When is the last time you had a cup of water from the faucet? Ooh. It's been a long time ago. I can't even remember. It's been a long time ago. Councilman Aaron Banks has represented Ward 6 in South Jackson for the past five years. If Jackson has been plagued with these problems, we've heard some people say decades, you know, at least the past five years, why hasn't a plan been put in place prior to this? One of the things that I know we all have pushed for is making sure that the funding is there for the plan. That's all we can do to fund project management, to make sure that we're in compliance with the EPA. How do you respond to the failures of the city to take action? We can only do what we can do with what we have. Um, could there have been better decisions made as far as the prioritization of our money? Could the council have held the line to make sure that certain monies didn't go into certain places and that there were certain things to prioritize? Yes, yes, that could have happened. Is this water safe to drink? Even after the boil water notice, is this water safe to consume a drink? I would say it's not. Look, um, this is just me personally speaking. I give my dogs bottled water. So you don't even trust the water enough to give it to your dogs? <laughs> no. The problems that Jackson is having are representative of a bigger issue in the country, where neglected infrastructure is making just about everyone's drinking water potentially unsafe. Chris Serbeck is one of Mississippi's top water experts assessing those failing systems, including the ones in Jackson. People in Jackson, their children, what are they consuming right now? What's coming out of the faucet? So any boil water alert is in place because there is a suspicion that there are pathogenic microorganisms in the water. Okay, in essence, basically bacteria that might cause disease. E. coli, Giardia, Cryptosporidium. But Jackson also has a known issue with lead in drinking water. Um, 
There are lead pipes for drinking water throughout the city, as is the case in a lot of the country. And so as the water passes through the pipe, the lead from the pipe material leaches out of the pipe and into the water. How have we gotten to a point in America where people in a city can't drink the water? We don't think that of America, right? We, we think that we can open any faucet and, and, and drink the water, and, and that's not the case. How did it get here? Uh, a lack of investment, uh, maybe taking for granted as a general population, uh, taking for granted that we, have, what we had really good infrastructure 30, 40 years ago, and the government has not invested in infrastructure in the way that it did in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Are we going to start seeing this more often? I think we are going to see more water crises more often, like in Jackson. I think we are heading in that direction. At the last minute, the district found a school with running water outside Jackson to host Callaway's game. You never know how important something is until it's taken away from you. When there's a shortage of clean, usable water, then you see how, how it impacts everything. Washing your clothes, to taking a bath, brushing your teeth. It has a huge impact on just day-to-day -day operations. All the way to football. Mm -hmm. If we have no water and it's 96 degrees outside, you can't go play no football in it. You can't do nothing in it. So what are the stakes right now for these kids? If they can't play, what happens to them? A lot of our kids, that's, that's the reason why they even come to school, because they want to play sports. For a lot of them, it's, it's their way out. It's going to give them an opportunity to get a free education. It's going to give them an opportunity to get outside of Jackson and get to a place where maybe they don't have to walk, worry about the water issues. A lot of our kids already are going through a lot personally in their lives. And to add that on top of it, and that's something that they can't even control, it, it's it's unfair. It's disheartening. I hope that we can do something to find a solution to the problem so we don't have to deal with this continuously. Use this pot here. This will always boil the water with on the stove. Right? She would fill this up every day. Every day. LaToya Montgomery is the mother of Callaway High School senior Kadarius Wade, an all-star player who's relying on this final season to help secure him a spot at a top college. They haven't had safe tap water in weeks. What's it been like recently? I mean, have things gotten better? Not really. <laughs> at first, the water pressure was kind of low. Like, it was real low. It was hard to use it. We was a boil water alert. Then the flood came in and made it worse. So, you know, at one time they wouldn't want us to use it at all because they were like it was lead or bacteria or something in the water. I don't know, just a whole hot mess. How has this changed your day-to-day <laughs> -day life? I mean, this is, this is like a, it's a, headache. a massive interruption. Yeah. yeah, it's a big change. Then a lot of money, a lot of unnecessary money go to spend the money on water that we really don't need to spend. You're picking up more responsibility than you already have. You know, you got to make sure your brother's doing what we tell you to do because, you know, they're younger, so he's here with them in the morning time when they get ready for school, so he's got to make sure they're not, oh, I forgot and turned on the sink water and using water at the sink. He got to make sure that they use a bottle of water, so. How does this affect you as a player? I mean, you have so much added stress on the field. Yeah, like, as a player, you're on the field, you know, you do so much running, you know, you get tired. Sometimes, you know, at first at practice a little bit, we was running out of water and things like that, but. We had people in the community and stuff like that wouldn't step up and get water. And it adds so much stress because you're thinking on the field, man, do I really got enough water as a practice to, you know what I'm saying, fuel my body up with instead of just running and being dehydrated. Does it anger you the way that this has all gone down? I mean, come on. <laughs> got to do better. It's affecting thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Why do you stay? I was just trying to get them a better life, you know, more opportunities here. You might have to worry about a lot of things, but water should not be it. <laughs> I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts. 
not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.